and start mm -hmm. the meeting. Yeah, it's recording. You're good. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is the March 23rd meeting of the Joint Capital Planning Committee. And uh, the first thing I need to do is make sure everyone can hear and be heard as um, uh, and I will just go around the screen and just so everyone knows that Irv sent a note, I think he sent it to everyone that he would not be coming today. Um, he authorized us to move ahead. <laughs> so um, Pam. Here. Alex. Here. Farah. Here. Jennifer. Here. And Mandy. Present. And Farah, feel fleet. Free to tell me when I say your name wrong. I'm Alex is trying to train me, and it's I, perfect today. Thank you. Okay, my daughter's middle name is Mara, so it's very helpful. Ah, right, have... with yes. <laughs> so, so I think you know. In between last week and this week, um, Sean, I don't know whether he emailed it to everyone, but Sean came up with another recommendation from I. Sean and the town manager um, that reflects what we're going to talk about today. And he also went ahead and revised the tables based on what we did last week, which was the changes and then moving money into roads. So Sean, do you want to speak first and then we can go to the actual document? document? Sure. sure. Um, Jennifer, I can't remember. Were you, was last week the, one, the meeting you missed? Yes. Would it be helpful to review quickly the um, the uh, we went over some recommendations from the town manager that changed the plan. Um, I can go through them quickly if it would be helpful to you just to kind of give you an update where we left off. Sure, that'd be great. Thank you. All right, so let me just pull this up real quick. And just so people know, I did do draft min minutes, but I didn't get to listen all the way through the video. So I didn't wasn't sure they were in the correct order with my notes. But I sent Jennifer the rough draft minutes, so she didn't have to watch the two hours. <laughs> so. All right, so um, just quickly recapping uh, what chain or what we discussed last week that was different from the, the plan as presented initially. Um, so uh, reductions to the interior, interior exterior maintenance, um, sort of general facility capital money bucket um, of $50,000. And this is to reflect that we have um, some prior year articles that haven't been fully spent. And so when we're looking for areas to reduce this plan, that was an area that we thought made sense. Uh, HVAC replacement server and communication room. Uh, this is a project that's just more urgent than um, as we've gone through, this has become more urgent. Um, we're gonna look to use old, again, that sort of general capital money bucket to pay for that. Um, and so we've been able to pull that off the plan. Uh, no change. Oh, so I'll just mention this change as we go through. This is what Kathy alluded to. So uh, we, we started going through the application for the body cameras, uh, the grant application for the body cameras. And it's one of those ones where we would have to apply the spring and the award would possibly be in the fall. Um, and to avoid any, any potential um, perception that they're supplanting or any type of issue there, we think we would rather pull this off the plan, list this in the capital improvement program in that section that sort of puts has projects that when funding becomes available, we would move forward with, um, put it there. And then we would come back uh, once we, uh, if we get the grant in the fall, we would determine what our shares at that time and come back to the council in the fall for an appropriation. Um, so again, just to avoid any potential uh, supplanting issues, we would pull this off, this three, uh, the 251. John, can I just ask a question as you go along or anyone? So my question on that is, as you go through the deliberation, one of the issues we raised is 50, the count of how many we, we need. So that's going to be additional discussion and then also the discussion. So that will be happening as you apply as we apply for the grant. And, and I don't know, I, th I think we talked about this a little bit last time. Um, the chief agreed with you 50 is probably too many um he didn't quite go he didn't go want to go down to half which i think is what you had proposed um but he had gone to the 35 40 range um and the reason for that is that there are certain events throughout the year where it's sort of all hands on deck in terms of staffing um and so we wanted to make sure that 
everyone could have their right. own at that point. Um, but he did reduce it down from the 50 number by about 20%. Okay. No, I just, I, I'm going to take notes, but that's, I mean, we don't need to know that right now because that's going to happen over time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, right. and depending on the grant, again, it could be, you know, a, I've got to look at the grant a little bit closer, but the grant will pay about two thousand dollars per body camera. So depending on their cost, we um, there may or may not be a town share. Okay, thanks. Uh, going to the next section, the school. So same thing as with the town, we reduced the interior, exterior upgrades and ADA improvements by fifty thousand. Um, this is similar to what, like I said, at the town where there's prior year articles that haven't been fully spent. So when we were looking for areas to reduce, this one made sense. Field maintenance equipment. Uh, this was uh, 310 or so, and it included multiple phases for field equipment um, that Guilford had submitted. There was a phase one and a phase two. We decided best to just proceed with phase one for FY24, and we moved phase two to FY25. So this would fund the first batch of, of field equipment uh, that Guilford proposed, and then we would see how that goes and then look for the next uh, phase in FY25. Where's your sidewalk plow? Was that in that set? Uh, no, that's in vehicles. Okay. Okay. Don't worry, we didn't add it back. Um, <laughs> uh, Amherst Recreation, uh, this was based on the conversation with uh, Ray Harp, the Recreation Director. Uh, he had prioritized the top dresser over the irrigation system improvements. Um, the top dresser wasn't initially presented, so we've put that in and we've pushed the irrigation system improvements out. And then the parking lot, we haven't changed that. That, that will have to be a conversation between um, the DBW and recreation around how to make the best use of that money. Down below, uh, or in the school, or in the vehicle section, so again, the sidewalk plow for 200,000. We've pushed that out to give more time to evaluate is that the most cost effective way to address the sidewalks, um, the snow plowing related to the sidewalks. So that's been pushed out to FY25. And for the school bus, electric school bus, we added in the, the town share that will eventually get reimbursed through the grant. So that's what this 200,000 is. And we propose for that to come from prior year closed capital um, so that we're not taking away from current year resources to cover something that will be reimbursed. Special education vans, there was a $35,000 request there. We had the um, capital or capital cost escalation reserve fund that was approved in FY23. There's still uh, funding there. And so I'll work with uh, the schools to um, put this 35,000 against that reserve fund so that we can pull out of the capital plan. And then the last one is the cruisers. And talking with the chief, we were able to reduce the number of cruisers being proposed for FY24 from four cruisers down to three cruisers um, to get to be more consistent with their replacement uh, schedule. Um, and so that saved about 75,000. So all of that, um, not including the, uh, where am I replace here? Let's see. All of that, not including the body cameras yet because I haven't uh, factored that in or haven't adjusted that, but those other changes besides the body cameras resulted in um, us having available funding of 467 instead of a deficit of about 200,000. And then the conversation went to how to allocate that, which the group was leaning towards roads and sidewalks um, among some other topics to be discussed. And that's how we got here. Thank you. That was very, very helpful. So, so can I just, I think the one new element um, is the, there's now an additional 251,000 that would go to that 467,000. So maybe if it makes sense to people before we go through the other content of the report, um, I think we agreed last time to allocate all four, 467 to roads and sidewalk. And then it, we left unresolved whether some to roads, some to sidewalks. And I picked a number. And the reason I picked the number is I either asked Paul or Sean, one of them is, what number would you like us to pick? And they said, maybe 100 to sidewalks and the rest to roads. I mean, it wasn't a, you know, it wasn't an informed uh, other than a reaction. So my, my question is the, on the 251 that just appeared, would 
I would be in favor. So I'll do it as of also putting that into the road bucket, um, road sidewalk bucket. So I'm just opening it up for discussions just of this one new piece of information we have. Uh, Pam's hand is up and then Mandy. Thank you. Um, I was sort of looking back at the previous uh, five-year plan. So that would have been the FY23 one. And in the um, reserves and stabilization, we had we had uh, quite a lineup of funds that were being set aside for stabilization. So um, FY23 was shown at 500,000. FY24 was projected to put in a million for FY25, a million one point one five zero, then that down to 900,000, 600,000, but, but all in all, a fair amount of money, about four or $5 million being put actively into stabilization. So in this round, one year later, we we are showing zero dollars put being put into stabilization, and um, you know before we have the complete agreement or conversation about uh, putting the, the the found the found dollars from from this review um, into roads and sidewalks. I just wanted to have a quick conversation about um, capital. Yeah, it's okay, Kathy. If I respond to that. Yep. Yeah. So. Um, just to be clear, um, last year's plan, it proposed pulling money from capital stabilization, so taking money out of capital stabilization to support the capital plan, not to put money back in. Uh -huh. um, and, yeah. the, okay. and, the, and the reason why that was is um, prior to updating our planning for the four building projects for all the rising interest rates and construction costs, um, the plan previously was to finance the fire station, the DPW, and the Jones Library from this um from our capital allocation here and just use reserves for maybe the first six or seven years to cover the high years of the debt um, and then wean off of using reserves so that was the plan for using those capital reserves in the past a couple of, or a year later with construction costs going again high and interest rates going high we've modified that plan to to look at would it be better financially just to save up and fund the fire station completely, not having to borrow for it um, to save the, the higher interest rates? Um, so that's why the plan has changed in that way is that last year was used to kind of top off and cover some of our debt for the first five, uh, six or seven years. Um, and we've changed our thinking a little bit in the last year because of the economy um, to try to save up and use those reserves to actually just avoid borrowing for one of the projects. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So it was not it was not money going into no unfortunately not i wish it was i wish it was, it was it's a pam it was a revenue source not an ex not a, a flow out so i guess i want to get to mandy but one question is we we have pretty substantial deficits in 26 27 and we're not showing any draw on res on reserves to help so you might want to speak to that after we deal with first the body cam issue Oh, and my question. So, Mandy. Um, yeah, with the body cams, what I heard from Sean was they'll be essentially pulling it off of this, not because we might not have the expenditure, but if we allocate it, we might not qualify for the grant due to state laws on, well, it's already allocated, so we can't actually get a grant because it would supplant the allocation and state laws doesn't allow that. And so they don't want it allocated right now, but they're not sure how much of the grant would, if we get a grant, how much would pay for the body cams and they're not sure whether we'll get it. And so I would rather recommend that we don't, that Paul essentially um, either put into, either don't allocate that 261 at all or put it into, uh, we've done a capital reserve fund, I think in COVID year or something that was like general capital reserve fund or something that that could go for any capital. Um, I don't know what you called it, Sean, back in yeah. 2021. I mean, um, and maybe yeah. maybe add a line for that amount that's general capital. And then we recommend that it first be put towards body cams if necessary. 
and if not necessary, depending on whether, you know, if necessary and if approved by the council, right? Because you have to get the surveillance tech bylaw approving the use of the body cams. Um, and if not approved by the council or not necessary because the grant covers everything, then the recommendation be the next spending be X. And that can be roads, that can be sidewalks, but I'd, I'd rather not allocate it to roads and sidewalks when we might need it for body cams, depending on what happens. Alex? Can I, um, Kathy, can I just respond to that quickly? Sure. The sure. only, um, th that seems like a, a reasonable approach. Um, we typically, we don't wanna have general capital that has really no um, thoughts attached to it. I mean, we, I, 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 not, there's no thoughts. Uh, we don't want it just to be so broad that if, if we're asked, what is this used for? We, um, so this might be a time where what Pam was describing might make sense, which is contributed to the capital stabilization fund. It's there. Um, and then in the fall, uh, we, it could be pulled out. It could, there could be a vote of the council to pull it out um, to support this if needed. So you're, you're kind of stashing it away for capital purposes now that we have that stabilization fund. There's another option that could be considered. Alex? Thanks. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure what I think. I mean, what Manny Joe's proposing is, in some sense, is kind of what we had sort of agreed to last time, which, but it was to put it into a general sort of, uh, I think we called it like a safety bucket so it could go towards some of the purchases for police and fire that we're pushing off into later years if we didn't need it. And I guess I guess I have two questions. One, the amount that we have right now, um, it doesn't sound like it's gonna be 251,000 because there's gonna be some grant money available. Um, and I'm always hesitant to throw 251,000 aside if we really only need to be throwing you know, 75,000 aside for these potential body cams. And, and I guess what comes to mind is, you know, again, um, through no fault of, of residents, right? Um, the residents have brought requests, you know, again, to us that we can't really do anything with at this point, you know, and we have recommendations around, you know, TAC and what it should do, but I'm wondering if we could take those additional funds and, you know, and I think Sean, you actually suggested this previously and I kind of poo-pooed it, but here I come back to it. What, you know, for sort of like, if we're going to charge tack whomever with sort of looking at these things, do we do we give a bucket of money so that that happens? And would part of this funds be a way to do that? Just thinking out loud. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm going to, I'm just looking to, I want to make sure everyone else has spoken. I. I like that idea a lot, Alex, and I was going to argue both the body cams that the chief is going down to 35, that's a substantial reduction in, from, tip to, from 50. And if there's grant money coming in, that's another reduction that's substantial. So I would rather just push that into its a category because I don't think we had a long discussion on a need versus a want for those. I understand where, where this is coming from. Um, and so I think there needs to be more discussion. So when I flip to the roadside, we've got clamoring out there by residents, and it's pretty much all over town. And I think um, it, doing something toward since there was a big chunk of the proposals we got for roads or road safety, including flashing lights and uh, doing, if we can do it fungibly the way she just suggested, Sean, but but I think it's it's really important to show we moved on this. And, um, you know, I'm doing it in a, uh, looking at the elementary school building project looming where people are wondering, what are my tax dollars buying for me as they're being asked to spend more on tax dollars? So I, I just think it's really important. So then I have one last question before I open it up to everyone. Um, I've had a side conversation with no answers um, on a, we've got ORPA money we haven't yet allocated and we can allocate it to capital kinds of things. Um, you know, because it can't just be an ongoing operating cost. We couldn't fund a road with it. So I'm wondering, Sean, 
which, if any, of the big ticket items, including uh, the uh, the uh, pumper truck, which doesn't hit us this year, but then hits us in, in out years, if any of those could be done with ARPA money, it eases the stress on this capital budget a little bit. And so I'd put the bad body cams if we end up needing you know, fifty thousand dollars rather than two hundred and fifty. So, so I'm I'm asking it as a question in terms of other sources than the ten point five percent for capital, which is what we're we're struggling with. Uh, and I'll just I'm I'm raising that, and I know there's not an answer for it. So, but I just want to know if it's even on the list of potentially eligible. Um, is okay if I respond and say a couple of things. Um, so the safety improvements, yeah, I, I think you could allocate sort of like we do for the transportation plan, you could allocate um, funding for safety improvements or road, you know, road and sidewalk safety improvements or something like that. Um, and because we do have projects, so we have sort of a sense of the types of things that they're going to be used for. Um, uh, in regards to the ARPA, um, you know, working with Paul at some point, hopefully in the very near future, there will be a uh, conversation with the council around the plan for the rest of that money. Um, so I don't want to complicate that since it's it's on track to come to the council at some point soon. Um, and then full disclosure, because I don't want you to make a recommendation and then hear something completely different come out of <laughs> come out of Paul. So um, and Pam, you already raised this, but I think the more we've looked at it, the more we we um, think we need to do something there um, is with tree planting. So. There, um, you know, there are various trees throughout town that have some uh, issues going on with them through different diseases, and you've probably heard about different things going on with trees. Um, so I think there is an interest to put a little bit more money into the tree planting and removal bucket. Um, we we modified that bucket so it could include uh, tree planting, but we didn't originally increase the appropriation there. Um, so just so you all know, I know that's on his mind is um, putting. You know, somewhere thirty or forty thousand dollars more into that category to support annual tree planting. Mandy. Okay, this is kind of off topic, but I'm looking at the out years, right? Um, and and it, it goes to something Kathy was saying about ARPA money, but but say the 250 for body cams if we don't think we need them for body cams at all and i'm looking at all of the crocker farm stuff coming up particularly next year crocker's got over a million dollars in facility requests that are roofs windows and hvac um all listed as borrowing mm -hmm. and so i guess one of my questions is could some of that be used? Could some of the, you know, the 260 from body cams be used to lower the borrowing amounts for that or start those projects earlier? I don't know how dire Crocker Farms say replacement windows are or something, you know, like uh, there's a HVAC replacement that probably can't be done in stages, but windows might be you know, have we thought about some of that reducing the instead of borrowing for all of that, using some of this money to start those projects earlier and at all? I don't even know whether the school committee wants that or anything, but I was just trying to look at some of the bigger projects that are in these out years. Yeah, no, it would be um, if we can reduce future borrowings, obviously that makes everything easier and gives more um, flexibility to future years. So with the you know, if that was the recommendation was to, if the money is not needed for body cams to put it towards reducing um, the, what we would borrow for these projects, then that's something that, you know, would make sense in my mind. Um, you know, there are a lot of projects at Crocker Farm. Um, you know, one of the things we use to plan for is, you know, so we don't keep, lose track of these things, but as they get closer, we reevaluate, is it really needed um, in the upcoming year? So, the likelihood of doing the HVAC, the replacement windows and the roof all in the same two-year span is probably um, aggressive, um, but we'll see. Again, I think next year we'll, when the schools submit their plan, um, we'll see if that space is out more based on sort of the urgency of each of those. Um, the other thing it doesn't include, and it may not include, unfortunately, um, but we'd like it to, is MSBA participation. Um, 
in in their accelerated repair program. Uh, again, they may that program's been ended. We don't know if that will come back. So, um, and I don't know if the Crocker Farm roof is has gone to like the twenty eight years of age that it has to be in order to even be eligible at this point. So, but yeah, so we'll relook at those that cluster of big projects, and if um, if there's a recommendation to try to uh, use this flexibility to reduce debt, we can look at that too. Alex. I don't know if Farah wants to go first since she hasn't said anything yet. Okay. okay. Um, so not not to bring the elephant into the room, into the elephant, into the room, <laughs> but um, the library, right? Um, so the library is not a certainty at this point because it requires an additional vote of the town council to appropriate the funding. Um, and I have no idea how that's going to go, but I guess I just want to remind this group that if the project doesn't move forward, the necessary expenditures don't go away. Um, and for those of you who may not be following the library as closely as those of us on the library are, um, you know, as the chair of buildings and facilities committee, um, I can tell you that of our four boilers, we're down to three. Um, we're hoping to have uh, a year left on that boiler, but it's a lot of hoping going on right now. So the library is working, there is an internal working group um, of which uh, Jeremiah LaPlante, Rob Mora, Sean, Stephanie, George Hicks, our building uh, uh, person and Sharon are on. So the town is working on a plan. Um, but if, again, the timing is is awkward on this, but and, and I don't know how it's all gonna come out, but I just wanna make sure that this group as we're thinking about these future, you know, out years understands that, um, you know, what we've heard consistently from Jeremiah LaPlante in this setting is that it takes a year, you know, once you decide on a replacement boiler, it takes a year to get that boiler. So if we're lucky, we have that year. So uh, our best case scenario is we get to, uh, you know, where it's time to close the library down for the project and we know everything's on order because that's part of the project. The worst case scenario, for me, in my opinion, as the chair of buildings and facilities, is we decide not to move forward with the project. And then we have the failure, and then we have another year, which then means we're gonna have to rent equipment. So on top of the repair, we have rental, and that's a cost we're working on getting um, right now uh, for town so they at least know what that rental would be. Um, and I, again, don't know when we start triggering. I mean, there are a lot of repairs that come into play and I'm not sure those numbers that we're looking at for the library get any less for the town. They could be more. Um, and as we have these excess funds, you know, we've sort of conveniently not talked about library costs in JCPC. And, you know, since we've changed over to the charter, um, there used to be a lot of discussions in JCPC around looking at the cost. Um, so as, as we're looking at sort of this, extra money and we're putting it to other things, I think that's great, but I just don't want to lose sight of if the project doesn't move forward, these costs don't go away for the library. And we are, correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, probably gonna have to borrow for whatever work that we do. Um, so I just, I just, I, the, the library, like it's not a set deal. And so I just want people as we're talking about funds and where they go, not forget <laughs> that that that's sort of the situation of the library at the moment um, is that we have our fingers crossed that that the systems make it but it is likely we might have to have some kind of rental situation so I don't know whether that goes into JCPC or whether you know we don't we don't have that bucket of funds like we do for every, everybody else right we don't have these contingency funds we don't have because we just sort of haven't really, I, it's, it's tough to be running two plans simultaneously, but I just right. don't want people to forget that it exists, so. And just to build off what Alex said, the debt is in the plan. So if for whatever reason, it doesn't move forward, there, we have to make some big changes to the way the plan looks because you would take the debt from a building project and we'd replace it with whatever the repairs are, are um, that would be approved and uh, as they would move forward. So there would be a big structural change in how this looks, um, depending on how that goes forward. 
But it's if you look at that last page on the debt, Jones appears twice with really big numbers. You know, it's it's not attached to what you just said about getting rid of, you know, fixing the boilers, but it's it's uh, you know, it's it's substantial. Um, I had to find the print is so small on these, Sean, that my eyes have trouble finding it, but it's in twice. So yeah. Far, far off. Um, so as I mentioned last week, I'm all about roads, but I'm glad that Mandy Joe brought up Crocker Farm because, um, you know, I'm hoping the school project goes through, but at almost 100 million more than it would have been six, seven years ago, we still have a school that has a whole lot of problems, gym, playground, roof. I mean, I'm a, Croc I'm a former Crocker parent and I know it's a bad situation. And Alex lives in the building now and she knows that as well. So I'm glad you, I, I would be for that. I mean, I would support that part um, as Mandy Joe suggested. Um, also just wanted to second what um, Alex, since you brought it up about the library or Alex, I, I've been thinking about that since our uh, buildings and facilities meeting this week, but I'm glad Sean spoke to that. Thanks. So I have a question on what we want to say in the document. Um, you know, so so here's a potential version of what I'm hearing, and it won't be very well worded, but Alex will help me word it well. Um, we just got given another 250 ish, 251,000, and we have two potential ways to use it. Um, that would that we're recommending to the town manager. One is to create a bucket that's called road safety that could potentially be addressing some of the resident proposals or types of resident proposals that were brought forward if there's a decision positive. The other would be to see if anything on the Crocker next year list could and should be undertaken in the FY24 list. And we would leave those decisions to the, the I'll call them the powers that be, um, since we don't, we can't pick off um, we can't we can't pick off different ones of them not knowing whether it's it's ready to move. Would that wording work um, so that it's either going to a road sidewalk bucket um, and then Sean says it's going to be a little less than two hundred and fifty. One, because they're coming in with another 30 for trees, tree removal. So, I mean, we need, we can say something during this discussion. It was that that line item's going up. So the net is really something more like 220, what, whatever the number is. I mean, we'll make sure the number is right. Does, does that wording work uh, for what we're recommending? Mandy. So I, I hesitate to put it to, the the bucket for road and sidewalk safety i think is how you described it because you know in our conversations and alex has been a big proponent of that it's not just the projects that dona brought forward right and so i would hesitate to say well let's put it there and if those projects those particular projects are found worthy give it to them because that doesn't seem equitable to me about around town you know i think i I had some comments in our report about that where I think we we really want to see a study on road safety and where throughout town those improvements need to be and find a way to do that with um, some sense neutral criteria that doesn't depend on um, who knows how to advocate in the right spot. Um, so I, I don't think I can support sending it to a bucket that would be spent based on who knows how to bring their projects to a specific. So you're saying don't don't link it to specific projects is where you're. Yeah, and, and if we that and, that's one of my concerns. So that yeah, and but at the same time, what I'm hearing from library, we've heard in this discussion before about well, schools have a facilities fund, town has a facilities fund, but library doesn't even have a facilities fund, right? Um, we don't know what those costs are going to be. And then there's the Crocker issue. I actually am moving towards sort of Pam's original suggestion, which is let's let's actually 
allocate some to the capital stabilization fund um, with something in, you know, recommend that allocation with something in the report about here are places we think it could be spent given X, Y, Z, or look at Crocker, look at the, the library, things like that. But I think this, to me, it would be better spent looking towards some of the big facility projects than um, road and sidewalk safety, given the uncertainties about our facility projects. So, uh, Pam, you could talk, but I think we, well, I would, we, we have a disagreement, so yeah. And I was actually leaning toward Mandy Joe's suggestion, sure. which was which was to think about Crocker. Um, I appreciate Alex's conversation about the library being in a similar situation, but I um, I think that I it feels like Crocker is going to be I, what I really don't want to see is the haves and have nots of a brand new school and and Crocker, which we know needs some work. It's you know the same age roughly as the other ones. Um, if we were to put this into the into a stabilization, the capital stabilization account, we just have this conversation again at another time. Um, I didn't know if it made sense to. Um, I mean, we we can either just say it goes into this bucket. TAC is uh, the Transportation Advisory Committee may come back with some good recommendations on road safety projects. Um, the library has a, a certain number of needs and we just literally kick this can, put it in the bucket, kick that bucket down the road a little bit and don't make a decision within this organization today. Um, or I don't know, the other, the no. other option is to put it, just put it to a vote, a vote today and say, we feel strongly that this money, this found money goes toward X. So this is only a recommendation to the town manager. And then he, you know, he will then, he will then listen. So to the extent we, we can put it to a vote and we can indicate the majority wanted a specific, but there was also minority. We, we can do that in the report to him so he doesn't have to listen to the tape of today's discussion or read our minutes. Um, or we can see whether there's wording that we all can support. Um, I would continue. I'm comfortable with saying if there's anything that would be moved up from Crocker, uh, we would advocate doing that. Um, and then otherwise put it in roads and road sidewalk safety, including a general allocation, but to extent any, uh, there are clear criteria. Mandy, I wasn't gonna anchor it in specific resident proposals, but if there are some of the kinds of things people are suggesting that have been on the list anyway, they don't tend to be on DPW's list. Let's, let me, you know, they don't tend to think of blinking lights that tell you you're going above the speed limit. Um, they resist those. Um, and we don't have any policy, you know, we don't have a tag policy. So I, I'd be comfortable work, working it very generally and that Paul would then work through maybe it, we end up, end up doing one somewhere under that category and the rest goes to the general roads and sidewalks. So it's not taking 230. But I, I, that, I have a strong point of view on putting Crocker in, not returning it just to stabilization fund, but, but giving a, a signal from this committee that we put a priority on roads. So I'll stop talking, but that's, that's where my vote would be, depending on what kind of wording we can come up with. Alex? Um, yeah, so I'm just going to echo what I had heard you say was not tied to these specific, or at least the way I believe I heard it is the way I wanted to hear it, which was that we were recognizing these projects are bought forth by people who know the process, but there's a larger issue and the money would be for once we get through. So that was how I had heard it as well. Um, and I guess I would check in. I don't know whether Jennifer or Sean have any comments, but I'm always leery of, of creating priorities that may not be brought forth by, like if school committee is not saying Crocker's our number one priority, like I don't want to, I mean, you all know I'm there every day, <laughs> but like, I don't want to make, I don't want to make priorities for the school committee. Um, so if, if, I'm not against it at all. I would love to see money going into Crocker, but I just want to be mindful of sort of this found money and and what we do with it. And I think it's really easy to start 
picking off projects, but the reality is everything everything that got pushed out, right, is, is being pushed out. And many of these things that we've pushed out, um, again, having been on this committee for what, seven or eight years, like there are some things that we've been pushing out for four and five years. So I guess I just wanna pause and and make sure that 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 we're sort of looking holistically at where the the these found dollars should go. And I don't know the answer to that. I just, again, wanna give pause. Jennifer? So let's see. I don't. The, I. The, I don't. I don't think the, the the school committee hasn't like had a specific discussion and vote on this. So um, I can't share any information on that. I I know for for me personally as a school committee member and as a former Crocker Farm parent, I I'm in favor of of that of of prioritizing Crocker Farm. I don't think it would go against anything that the school committee has decided or has 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 said or has prior like I don't think it's gonna it's it doesn't wouldn't go against anything that the school committee has decided or or has said. So I'm I would be I'm comfortable going comfortable moving forward with that. And Alex, what I was thinking is the way we could word it, we're not going to pick. And it's just it's more of it's more of if the things on Crocker's next year list would have been there was a strong preference on this year's list and there just wasn't any room for it, that they at least get to have a second look without us Pick, that would be a discussion. Um, you know, Sean, you have a better sense of how much bargaining you did before the five-year plan arrived to us in terms of, you know, we don't have any money for that. Can you move it to another year? You know, you you, you clearly did a lot of work to get it as near to balanced as you brought it to us. So I don't think we were going to suggest do it with Crocker, but more if there were something that would be better to do sooner. Um, that that we leave that to the schools plus you to decide was the way I was thinking of writing it, Alex. Not a we're gonna oh there's one for eighty thousand let or let's do the curtain or you know these were all Rupert came and laid them out for us in a very logical way a year ago on a he did talk about that whole rollout for Crocker. So Alex. Yeah, Sean, is it possible? I mean, I guess what I'm wondering is, is our direction more that we want to hold this money? I mean, what I'm hearing really is either building needs or, you know, road and safety needs. And I don't know if we as a group want to choose between those priorities. And, and you know, we have a lot of aging infrastructure um, in our town and, you know, we have plans around it, but I don't know whether we can make a general bucket, you know, if we decide that buildings are our priority, and again, maybe this goes back to sticking it in the capital reserve fund, but like, you know, do we set that money aside for what, whatever building blows up that we're not right? Like, I mean, the, the police department HVAC was on last year and it got pushed off and now we don't have a choice. It's not on this year because it has to be dealt with, right? And, and that's gonna continue to happen because we have aging infrastructure throughout our buildings. So. Um, again, while I very much advocate for Crocker Farm, I'm wondering, again, does it need to be more of a recognizing that some of our systems, I pick your building, may not make it, and do we set the money aside for that, or do we prioritize, you know, public safety around roads? Um, mm, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> um, so... I guess I'll just lay out some of the things I'm thinking. We have a uh, a lot of capital needs coming up. We have the building projects. I think I would apply the funds or recommend using the funds in any way that gives us the most flexibility uh, going forward. Um, so reducing debt, I agree with, because that's that gives us more flexibility. Put it in the capital stabilization fund, I agree with, because that gives us more flexibility. Um, I like the safety improvements idea because we heard directly from residents and it, and it does seem important. My worry there is it's, it expands um, the world of capital for us. We haven't really had that safety improvement bucket in the past. So now there's another bucket of capital every year that we would be looking at. Um, and given what we know is coming up, I worry about that. Um, so I think for the, you know, I, I know I said I, I don't mind that idea, but I think I'd want to look and see if there's other ways we can fund that, um, those safety improvements um, 
before we start setting aside money specifically for it, um, either through chapter 90 money or through grants or through other things that we can do. I think we still want to have the planning piece that Mandy Joe described, or we, we come up with a plan for townwide, how we, um, how we identify safety improvements, but the funding, I think maybe we wait one more year to see what comes out of that. And if there's other funding sources we can look to, um, Again, at the end of the day, we're, we're talking probably about $100,000 because we are going to probably still see, need some money for the body cam cameras, um, you know, either more or less, depending on whether we get the grant. Um, so really, it's what do we do with the balance that might be freed up? Um, and I think just recommending that to, in a way that doesn't uh, hinder any other projects is the best way to go. But ultimately, it's your decision. That's what we look to you to make these tough decisions. So I, I think we have two possible ways of saying this, that we, you know, we're, we're talking about such, in the great scope of things, $230,000. It doesn't, doesn't even, it barely buys us a bus, right? You know, I mean, it's, Not it's, an electric bus, that's for sure. It certainly doesn't buy us an electric bus. So we could say, you know, that with this change, there's 230, we, we would, we recommend looking on whether there's, anything on the building list that should be done sooner um, on roads and sidewalks to give them a priority and at with with discretion of the town manager this could include road safety and we just leave that as is that not saying x y or z um, that we just leave it as that bucket and the other alternative that pam originally came up with is say we're willing to give away $230,000 of this year's capital money and put it back in reserve and in a capital reserve um, that could then be uh, with that would require a council, a two third council vote to take it out of there for specific projects. So I think that is more cumbersome than than allowing it to be in this flexible category to move forward. Um, but those those are two very different ways of writing this. Um, and I lean toward the first. Um, if and I would I would seek Alex's help to make sure it's written generally enough that we're not saying it goes here or there um, and and we could get the language back. So Pam. Um, just help me think through. Um, so if if it goes into just sort of it's sort of held held in abeyance and not put into capital stabilization because that leaves us more flexibility and, and town council doesn't have to vote that appropriation. Um, what bucket does it sit in? Where, where does it hang out? No, well, so, so since it's our and, recommendation. And, and, and when does it get actually um, specifically voted on as, a, as, a, as an appropriation? So, from us, it's a recommendation. Paul might well say, I'm putting it here, you know, having heard this, so that what we're going to see as the council and the whole town is something that zeroes out and the money has been put in one of these line items, having heard from us. Okay, so that's the point. So we wouldn't have to come back to this in these narrow categories. As I said, it's it's only two hundred and thirty thousand dollars, so it may be administratively easier to put it all in one. Having considered what we're saying is some possible, so so we we are not at all a final say. We are uh, just giving a sense of this group discussion um, on what to do with it, and they won't. We would be. I've never seen the capital, any capital budget, come in with uh, uh, money unspent. So I would say it will be alloc It will be allocated by the town manager somewhere. <laughs> and since these categories, I mean, we say roads and sidewalks. Those are like which roads, which sidewalks. What are we? What are we actually? It could be crosswalks if the sidewalk has to be repaired with a, a cut in it. You know. So DPW has a lot of discretion on what exactly it's doing with it. So it, it's, so Pam, is that helpful? You know, we're not actually creating a line item here. We're creating a recommendation that we're not going to tell you which bucket to put it in, but give you an idea of potential places to look. Mandy? I think I could support 
a doc, you know, a recommendation that says um, look at the out year facility projects um, and see if any of them could or would be better to do sooner rather than later with this money, um, particularly if they get us off fossil fuels a year earlier or might save operating because of insulate, you know, pick whatever, right? You know, not necessarily always energy sustainability improvements, but but something that if we did it a year earlier, it, even something like I, I could foresee Crocker Farm windows, right? There's windows at the Bang Center. I think I've been looking at some of these facility things, right? Um, windows at the Bangs, if done a year earlier, might just save operating heating costs if you put in better windows, right? Um, uh, to, to sort of say, look at the facility out years and see if anything is right to be done now because, and, and could fit within this money. And then if not, consider more roads and sidewalks with it um, instead of sending it to say capital stabilization. I think I could support a recommendation like that. Okay, I'm I'm typing that up. I, that would, I think that for me, that works well. Um, uh, Far, far, far um, yeah, yeah. Just a wording question. So just to go back to what Pam was calling, saying, what would we call this bucket? Could it be something like the JCPC flex fund or something? Is that a possibility? <laughs> I'm hearing Sonia on my shoulder saying, no. Possibility. We'd have to look into, again, generally we want the capital projects to um, even within, for example, Jeremiah's sort of general bucket, we have ideas of how that will, what improvement projects that will be used for. For sustainability, again, um, Stephanie's bucket, she has sort of a list of ideas of what she'd use it for. Um, we don't necessarily want to have something that's in the in the capital world that's not um, related to something. Mm -hmm. um, I would, again, it's, a, it's not a bad idea. It's just, I know Sonia's yelled at me for that same idea several times, so. Okay. And, and and again, Paul can allocate these to a line. We can create what we've just said. Here's here's look at this, and then go here, and then he can say, "I did that," and this is where it landed. So so we're not we're not even creating a bucket here. We're creating possible uses of this money. Pam, um, I would I would second Mandy's. Um, position of looking at looking at those out year uh, facility improvements that that could be um, handled sooner, um, and also Sean's comment about um, trying to reduce debt in out years. So I think that's to me the helping reduce debt in out years would be a really big a really big factor. Okay. So that, I will take a stab at writing that up and sticking it into a document that will replace that whole long section on body cams, <laughs> okay? And Sean can tell us that it's not 251, it's, you know, subtract the trees, we're talking about whatever the number is. Um, and uh, so I think we've made and is everyone comfortable with that? That that's going to be the wording. You know, look at first facilities and what could be done. What if anything could be done sooner? Anything that could reduce debt. And if there's nothing that jumps off the page, I won't write it that way. But then put it into to roads and sidewalks. It, and if you want to consider safety or something like that, we can do that. Just and we don't have to use the safety if that gets you into trouble, Sean. So. Um, I'm willing to listen to don't create a new a new way for people to be coming in. Uh, so can I, yeah. Can I just clarify because what I typed and maybe I misheard was okay. um, look at the out your facility projects, see if any of them would be better to do sooner, particularly if they would provide sustainability improvements or save operating costs and done within these funds basically anything that would reduce debt. And if not, then send to Rhodes. And I thought I heard you say, Mandy J, or Capital Stabilization Fund. Did you not say that last part? Um, I, my mind's changed on that. So no, I didn't <laughs> say it's Capital Stabilization. But but I, I think I forgot the or reduce the borrowing part of the first 
facility side too. Okay. So I'm going to, if not, it's going to go to roads then. That's where everybody's in agreement on that? Yep. Okay. So everyone's in agreement? Great. Great. So we just balance the budget again. <laughs> so so can, I, can I update you on another uh, conversation that's sure to be lengthy <laughs> or, or, uh, or un, 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 uh, um, not straightforward, I guess it's probably the best way. Um, so we talked about the school bus, the electric school bus and what to do with that. Um, so I did have a meeting with Rupert, um, actually Rupert and Stephanie had a meeting and then I caught up afterwards um, about the, uh, the proposal for a new electric school bus and then also what to do with the batteries for the existing electric school bus. Um, so again, there's sort of two paths that could, we could, well, there's multiple paths, but two of the paths that we could go forward are, with are as is. So we leave the $150,000 in there for the batteries for the E-Lion. Some of that money has to be spent um, just to um, figure out the issues with the um, E-Lion. There's a dashboard issue that needs to be fixed before they can determine the condition of the batteries. Um, and then we would look at the batteries and replace them when they're needed and then use the E-Lion going forward, assuming there's no other mechanical problems with the E-Lion, which has not been consistent with our experience to date. Um, and then we would move forward with the grant, which would put $370,000 uh, towards an electric school, a new electric school bus, leveraging a $200,000 grant. Um, the 370 would be for the school bus and the charging infrastructure um, to have a, a dedicated fast charging, uh, fast charger put in for the new electric school bus. Um, so that's path one. Um, another path would be move forward with the new electric school bus and the grant um, as described. Instead of putting the money for the E-Lion uh, towards preserving the E-Lion, use that money to buy a new uh, regular bus, um, gasoline or diesel, whatever that they decide to go with, um, and look to dispose of the E-Lion. Um, it would save a little bit of money. It'd be a little bit less expensive than the 150 and it would give the schools a... a more reliable option than what they currently have. And then they would still have a fleet that would have one electric school bus sort of the way they have it now. Um, again, that option is not as green as the first option, but the first option, while green is not really, hasn't really reduced a lot. Well, it's reduced uh, uh, diesel output because they're not using the bus at all, right? It's just, not, it's just one less bus that they can use completely. Um, so, uh, you know, talking with Stephanie and, and Rupert, there's pros and cons of each of those options, obviously, um, but I think they that's where we kind of landed and we're looking for input as from this committee, which way you would recommend. Mandy? Yeah, I have a question. If we go option two, where we dispose of the E-Lion and we get a new hybrid bus, a new electric bus using the grant money, do we need new charging infrastructure or does the charging infrastructure that's there for the E-Lion, you know, like what, what would happen with that charging infrastructure that's already there? Could it be used for the new bus? Yeah, no, you would ask that last time. And that's that's one question I failed to get the answer to. I'm okay. sorry. Um, I, I don't, I know the current charging infrastructure is not necessarily fast charging infrastructure. I, I mean, it's not, it's faster than typical, but I don't believe it's the fastest that they make. Um, and I believe that's what they were trying to get with the new um, bus, but I will get the answer to that question definitively. <laughs> Didn't they, sorry to interrupt. Didn't they say that part of the grant was that you had to take the charging? Like I thought it was a package. Oh, maybe, it, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. My recollection was it was a package deal. Like you had to get both of them together was my recollection. You couldn't parse it out. Okay. That, then let me ask the next question, which is, I think there was a second separate charging infrastructure on there for other hybrid vehicles. Would the E-Lion charging infrastructure, if it's the level two, I assume the, the, charging infrastructure for the new electric bus is the level three. Um, and I don't know whether the E-Lion is a level three or a level two, but if it's a level two, could that infrastructure replace or be used for the vans and stuff? Like, would we need to go dormant with that? Mm -hmm. Or, cause I think there's other charging infrastructure, non-school bus charging infrastructure at 50,000 is in the thing right now. And so, would we need that if we get rid of the E-Lion? Because could that be used for that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, again, I'll find out the answer of whether there, I don't, I don't know enough about whether that charging infrastructure is specific to a bus versus if it's all the same and it just 
you know, you could plug into something else. So let me um, get the answer to that. Pam. Well, pending, pending those answers, um, it seems that it seems that B would make more sense in the long run. Um, I understand we don't necessarily want to add more diesel to our fleet, but we also need a reliable vehicle. So pursuing the, the new EBUS and, and the grant um, is kind of a trade-off, but I, I would certainly lean that direction. The other update is that um, I did talk to Rupert more about Highland. I know that was the public comment to that effect around Highland, that the company that um, has been working a lot on leasing of electric school buses and working with school districts to take advantage of whatever rebates or grants are out there. Um, so I've reached back out to Highland to ask kind of where that's left off and what if there's any other information I need from us. Um, and so Rupert and mine's thinking was, if we do get a new electric school bus that we own, um, that'll allow them to see how it works, see if it's more reliable than our previous one. Um, again, see if it operationally is a good fit. And then we could look to Highland to see if, you know, going forward when we look to get more electric buses, um, consider the leasing route um, once they determine that it's a good fit. Jennifer? Yeah, I'm encouraged to hear you talk about Highland. I think that's I think that's a that's a possible like wonderful solution for us. I I, I think it would be really short sighted for us to buy a diesel to invest in a diesel bus. I just feel like that's not 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 where our values are, not where we want to spend our funds. Yeah, the, so the only the the issue comes down to how much of the capital plan we want to allocate to buses. Um, so as Rupert said, they basically have to buy a bus every year. Um, uh, they have eight or nine buses and they last about 10 years. So um, so essentially they're going to be looking to buy a bus every year. And the question is, are we going to be buying at least until we figure out whether the new electric buses meet our needs um, and uh, until we get a proposal from Highland to see what a leasing option would even look like. Um, they can't really forego the purchase of buses. Um, he said, talking to Rupert, they have two or three buses that are pretty old and in poor condition um, that they need to address. So, so one way that if we, if we do not go with the repairs for Eli and they need a new bus um, to replace that one. And Jennifer, the, the issue with that is it's $150,000 of a battery and you might be putting it into a vehicle that still doesn't work. Um, so that, that seemed to everyone like good money after bad money. You know, if we don't even know whether it's going to come is it up in Canada right now under with repair? Um, I don't think the bus itself is up in Canada. So we had to come down from Canada to um, do some work on it um, and diagnose sort of what the issues were. Um, again, that bus was purchased completely with um, a Department of Energy grant. Um, so this would be sort of our first major, other than time, which has been a lot of time <laughs> invested, um, that be our first major financial investment into that bus um, if we were to do it. Can, can I just ask one question? And then I see both Mandy and Alex. Um, path one and path two. Um, is there is there a path three that if we didn't want to buy the battery for the bus, that a lease might cost a lease for one bus might be thirty thousand a year if we could find out that you know so that we get another bus but we don't have to spend $450,000 for an electric bus, and we don't have to spend mm -hmm. $125,000 for a diesel bus. Um, and, and so that's my, is there a path three? And then I don't know whether you always have to buy really big school buses or whether you can buy the smaller school buses. And or are there any, you know, by smaller, you know, 40 seater, 30 seater, um, but look like bigger vans and are there hybrids out there? And I don't know the answer to that. Stephanie was telling me, well, I saw her at a, 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 an event over the weekend and she said, you know, we can buy a lot more of those small vans yeah. with this amount of money than one bus and, and probably have as big a carbon impact, you know, on, in terms of the, what we're trying to get out of these uh, so that we should be thinking about the whole picture, not just each vehicle one at a time. That was just her view. And I personally have no ability to make this decision, Sean. I mean, I- this, um, to, But to your point, Stephanie is looking into, I think <laughs> I think we would all prefer to start with the vans um, because the additional increase um, 
increased cost is not as much for the vans to go to a fully electric van. Um, Rupert had identified there's some issues with uh, getting it certified to transport students, um, but I know Stephanie and Rupert are looking at that together to see if there's a way to look at our van fleet going forward and try to electrify that. So I see Mandy, Alex, and Jennifer. So a couple more questions. Um, from the conversation, it sounds to me like the E-Lion hasn't been working for a while, um, meaning we've been operating one bus down for nearly a year, if you ignore the E-Lion. Um, so I, I guess I'm unsure how important it is to replace the E-Lion versus, say, the diesel bus that's dying, right? That that's really old. If the E line, if we've been operating without the use of the E line at all um, for a long time, it must not be in all the bus schedules, is my assumption, right? Um it, it's just put more wear and tear on the other buses, the backup buses, because they don't have that one. Again, that would be one of our newer buses. That would be a sort of a frontline bus. Um, but since it's not operable, it, it means we're using one of the spares, which is an just an older bus. Okay. And then I'm looking at the capital plan again, and buses, they say they need one every year, basically, but in our five-year capital plan, we've got buses for three of the five years. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess one of my questions is, do we need two buses this year, or can we add a bus to the FY25 budget somehow to give us more time to figure out the the possibilities, I guess, right, um, about Highland and all, instead of buying a, a second brand new one or a brand new diesel, because if there's three, two or three diesels that are in bad condition, it would, you know, a lease at Highland for three versus one is probably a better incentive for Highland to work with us, right? Um, so, so I guess that's my other thought is, could we push at least a of two buses, the, the potential for a diesel out a year as we investigate this other? And then my other question is with the E-Lion, how much money would it cost to figure out the console issue that you guys keep talking about um, to see if it really, if that does quote, fix it versus not allocating mm -hmm. the battery issue, since we don't actually know if the batteries are bad. I'm just logging questions for Rupert right now. Is, um, is yep. sort of, yeah. Alex. So that was actually going to be my question was, we have 150,000, but we know that's for a new battery and, and I'm, and I'm, it would be good to know what those costs are because I'm wondering, you know, if the investigation is, you know, 25 grand, that leaves us 125 grand if we decide it's not worth fixing to then lease or do whatever it is we're going to do. Um, so I guess from my perspective, you know, and I guess to sort of Jennifer's point about, you know, where we try to keep our values, right, is, is you know, do we just make the recommendation of, you know, like put this money toward, keep this money toward buses. And if we can maintain an electric fleet, whether it's through leasing or, or repairing, you know, at the end of the day, Rupert's got to make that decision with town about what makes the most sense. Um, and the other thing I would remind the group about the vans is we, we contract with Five Star because we can't keep enough drivers <laughs> for buses. So if we are expanding our, 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 are vehicles to be driven, you are exacerbating what is already a very difficult issue for the district in terms of finding enough bus drivers. So um, that's as well as increasing your operating budget because you're hiring more and more. Uh, so it, that has consequences if right. you know we go that route. Jennifer. Yeah, I just would hate to see us put another diesel bus on the road for this for, because we feel like there's no other option right now and because we, we need to do something now. And I just, I would hate to see it. That's like a long-term, it's like a long-term like long solution to a short-term problem. And and so to Mandy Joe's point, can we put it off for a year? Or you know, as Kathy mentioned, is there a third option? And so I know that we contract with Five Star for some of our, from some of the buses that serve our students. Is there a way to just like add a bus to the Five Star contract for during this interim period as as a way to to solve this this interim you know problem that we have? Mm -hmm. 
That's a great suggestion. We, Sean has an, 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 a growing list of not path one, path two, but mm -hmm. multiple. I knew, well, I, I warned you this was not going to be a straightforward okay. conversation. Laura. Um, comment, question, sort of piggybacking on what Jennifer said. I mean, like, how many buses do we really need? I mean, I, I see the bus every morning and it's not full. And I know, I mean, I don't know what that's like throughout town, but I know enrollment is down. And also since COVID, a lot of parents are driving their kids to school and picking them up. So I guess it's more a common question, like how many are really being used fully? And I mean, I'm sure someone's looked into that, but mm -hmm. it's just the number of parents driving their kids to school has really increased. So is that going to affect things down the road? I don't know, but yeah. just add that to your list, I guess. Sean. Yeah, no, and I know, again, that ideally, I know parents want to drive their kids to school for different reasons. It would be great if they didn't and they used the bus from an environmental impact standpoint. I think that's the thing that you know, I've heard Mike and Rupert say at different times. They have to have, especially at the elementary level, there's there's more strict time requirements for how long kids can be on the bus. Um, and for anyone that's over a certain distance away, they have to make sure there's a seat on a bus for those students. Um, and so, you know, we're talking about the diesel bus versus the electric bus. It would be great if we somehow could figure out a way to, to really get people to, you know, some sort of movement to get people to use the buses more Um so that they're maximizing uh, their usage and also just less driving time for cars. You'd, you'd cut down a lot of fuel usage just from that. But so I will, can, but I will add it to the list. So can I ask, since we're we're trying to get to a, a report we can endorse um, with a hundred and fifty thousand dollar line item that says replace about the battery, you you have the ability if that line item stays in there to make a decision about these alternatives, correct? Yeah, yeah no, I think we have direction. So I think we, the direction I'm hearing is do whatever we can to not buy a new diesel bus. Right, um, and, and that there, there, there are potentially a, a range of ways of dealing with this is, do we need one less bus? Can we do your, the five-star contract as an interim thing till we figure out whether there's a leasing arrangement, anything, but we just keep that line item. And then you, you and Paul and Rupert, by you figure out how you word this but since you have to have a line item that's directed toward a particular project um you figure out by june 30th or something on what what that line item is is that how you would yeah i mean we could just we could put it towards bus improvements slash you know new bus slash repairs or something like that and it would be used for you know um either to replace the e-line bus or for some other type of busing cost um but i think in your report, again, if I'm characterizing it correctly, you should put something around, again, not not replacing with a diesel bus if at all possible. Okay. So is everyone comfortable with that? And then we, we're keeping the electric bus as it's listed right now in all its glory. Yeah. Pam. I rescind my comment about buying a diesel bus. <laughs> Okay, so Alex, who is, is Alex went through, um, just so you know, she's, she's turning into both the scribe and she's got control over the document right now. Um, she took all of the edits you sent in, Farah, and uh, Sean made corrections because I managed to mistype some of the numbers. So he'd already corrected, fact-checked it in terms of the numbers match things. Um, so what I wanted to see whether we have, it's 216 now, are people ready to move to anything substantive in the document? And Mandy sent in some uh, wording, wording questions, comments about statements, not so much about these recommendations, but some of them. Um, so I didn't know whether you wanna go through by page or just call them out so we could get to a quasi final draft. Um, and then we would, so my proposal, here's a proposal too, and then we can figure out how you wanna proceed, is that we go through the discussion, Alex captures it, I'm taking notes too. We do a revised version and we send it back out to everybody to see if that captured it. But we take a vote today that this in essence is what we wanna do. Um, and then knowing that there's word 
what's the word you use, Mandy Scribner edits, the the just missing words, there's a period, there's a, a good editor, sharp editor's eye sees there's some flaw in a sentence. So, so then we, so the, otherwise we will need to meet next week. So that's just keeping people, we're, we're at 217, um, if we wanna go through the document. Does, does that work for everyone to just zero in and, I don't know who else had any. Mandy, you were the only one that really flagged a few areas to that was a not just about the wording, but about what do we really want to have done here? You know, it wasn't so much the wording. Do you want to start out with the, your areas? Yeah, um, I, I can start out with the things I flagged so people know. I think some of them we've covered, right? So the first one was on page three about the tack and street safety and all and i think we've covered that in conversation today already in terms of my concern regarding the wording of what it was um right under that was the facility and sustainability funds that that just talked about we now have a lot of these sort of flexible funds and there didn't seem to be a mention about whether the library should have its own facility fund uh that we had and I don't know whether we'd gotten to a recommendation, but it it had stuck in my mind of we'd talked about it and I didn't see it anywhere in the document. Did we want to make a recommendation regarding the possibility of the library having its own facility fund, similar to the town and the school's facility funds that are these flexible ones to do repairs over the course of the year? Um, do you want me to go on? Um, yeah, the, so just so everyone knows, because I didn't share Mandy's, but what her rewording on the TAC, she liked the idea of the process, but she really wanted a neutral set of criteria that came up with a policy um, so that there would be a way of assessing. Um, and I thought it was a good, I, I, ship, I did send it on to Alex, so she has that. And I think we agreed. And we didn't talk the Mandy one, I'll send it to you, Alex. Okay. And, and, I, and I actually revised that as well, Mandy Joe. So right. I was going to say, I don't know that, that that Kathy's had a chance to look at mine, but I actually made I similarly substantive changes. So we'll see how ours. And she, she did it in a comment bubble rather than a wording yeah. change, Alex. So it was just okay. So maybe it was there and I just didn't, I wasn't looking at bubbles. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have to look at a comment bubble. So on the library trust, uh, the library bucket. So it came up really briefly. So Alex, why don't you speak to that first? Yeah, I actually, it's funny. I did the same. I paused, and but we didn't really agree to anything. And you know how I am. Since we didn't agree to anything, I didn't put anything in. Um, you know, I have mixed feelings at this point. I mean, creating a bucket that doesn't have any money in it seems kind of weird. <laughs> so I don't know whether it's just more a recommendation that in future years we think about establishing a bucket like we have for others and then make that part of the... I had taken it sort of as that future year recommendation, not necessarily for next year, but more of a, as we've done these, we noticed the library doesn't have its own in future years, consider that possibility, including whether or not the project is done, right? Like even if, even, even if we do the project at some point in the future, there will be maintenance funds to it. Um, Right. And I, and I think, again, like I pointed out that one time is that it did used to exist. I think we didn't used to have like buckets, but it did used to exist. But when the project started, it got removed. And I think as we created these buckets for the other company, uh, other, you know, areas, we just, there was no need to create a bucket for the library per se. So yeah, I'm, that's fine with me. I would be comfortable doing that. One of the things, Sean, the other thing that came up, Alex, when we were talking about it is, do we do three of them or do we do a mega that is for the a, a small list, you know, a list that is gets worked out and I don't come down one way or the other on it because what I've noticed is that a whole bunch of Rupert's items aren't in his bucket. He's itemized, we're doing these. And then his bucket, you know, his group is painting a room, you know, fixing a window because, and it's that $10,000 threshold, you know, these are smaller ticket items that until you add them up, don't, other 
other towns might call them those operating costs because you're supposed to do small repairs along the way in your operating budget. <laughs> but this is pulling them over, you know, so and and the schools are doing the same thing whenever it's larger, they're showing it. And then the school general thing has a bunch of miscellany that don't rise to the level of we're, you know, doing something more significant. Um, so that's so just I'm comfortable with doing the in the future, we may need a similar type of flexible fund for the library, um, putting that sentence in if others are comfortable with that. So the only thing and Alex, maybe you want to weigh in. So um, so the school fund is managed by the school facility director. The town fund is managed by the town facility manager. Um, and I don't, I know they work, the uh, town facility manager at times works with the library, um, with George at the library. I don't know how close and if, if um, my guess is if there was an urgent need that came up at the library, uh, capital need that came with the library, the funds that have been set aside uh, with Jeremiah could be used there. Um, so I, that would be the only thing that I think your recommendation is fine, I think, but I'd want to follow up with those two just to see how closely they work together and whether a third um, funding Maybe for, you need one, to just, for one building is needed. But I'm just thinking you've also got the branches um, where uh, Jeremiah is coming in. Right, and those do come out of the <laughs> Jeremiah's. So month, repairs at months in, for example, would come out of um, Jeremiah's funding. Alex. Oh, the library. Um, yes. So I guess I have two comments. Your comment actually um, about the the bucket and items under 10,000. So pre, pre adoption of the charter and post JCPC, that was always a very sort of hot topic for discussion was making sure that those items below 10,000 didn't creep their way into JCPC because they should be covered under operating budgets and they shouldn't be here. So if we have inadvertently created a bucket that allows for that to happen, that's a larger conversation that we should probably recommend in the future that we talk about is have we inadvertently created something that's not intended to be covered under JCPC? Um, uh, and also, I think, you know, the library has its own facilities manager, so I don't know why we would treat it any differently than the school has a facilities manager and the town does. So um, to me, it makes sense of if we're going to have separate buckets by facilities manager, then we have three buckets. If we're not, then we have one bucket and everybody plays in it together. But I, I wouldn't want to be in that room with that conversation of the three of them doing that. So, but I just think it from a, everything sort of working the same way, that would make sense. And as to the, the other, the, the branches, those are owned by the town. So that's why they're under Rupert's bucket or they're under the town bucket. I mean, rather than, yeah. Hey, Kathy, do you want me to move on to my other comments? Yeah, I, so I, 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 think, I think we have a resolution on wording on that. I didn't see anyone saying no. So I, I think we've got, it's a little fuzzy, but I think we can manage it. <laughs> yes, Mandy. Yeah. So my next one was a wording change in section B on page three, the second paragraph at the very end. The, the sentence read, you know, it's talking about um, that the five-year plan that we don't discuss the four building projects, but the five-year plan includes um, that borrowing and all. And the last sentence was, this assumes the sharp reduction of roads and sidewalks. And then it said, this assumes the council and town proceed with major building projects on the proposed timeline. And I suggested adding the wording and in compliance with the current funding plan, whatever that funding plan is, you know, just as a indication that we've put the whatever the council has agreed on in terms of how it's going to be funded what's going to be borrowed and what's going to be pulled from capital stabilization and all that's what's shown on the five-year plan and so if any of that changes that could change what the five-year plan looks like completely um similar to what pam was actually saying of capital stabilization had some pools in prior years and now they don't because we changed the plan <laughs> so if we go back to pooling it would show back up in the plan. So, so you're just adding that clause and yeah. I, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think I only had one other, well, I'm not even sure I had one other. You, oh, you yes, I did. I just, one question. 
You had one on fire was missing when I said. Yeah, so one question on the five year plan for the it, the end of page six, the last sort of partial paragraph on page six that read the five reads right now, at least the copy we had the five year plan for three major building projects, library, DPW, elementary school and DPW. And so I didn't know whether you were trying to. Yeah, I didn't. I, for I, a fire. Being that was the plan being paid fully by capital stabilization, so you weren't putting that in, or so that, whether so, you so Mandy, missed... Mandy, that I'm glad you flagged it because I didn't know how to write that in the document we received. It doesn't show up as costing us anything, and so everything was referencing off the debt schedules, and you yeah. know, and fire a year ago was on the debt schedule, and now it's not. So I think just rewording that, you know, current currently it doesn't appear because it was not doing. So it, there are there still are four, but the it doesn't appear on the debt schedule that we're looking at. Um, yeah, I, I think this is sentence where, added. Where's the language? Where where are you, Mandy? Just sorry, I'm um, trying to page six, the very last paragraph. It's a partial paragraph on page six. It's under the rec the high title recommended capital plan one year budget five year plan next steps. And okay. there's a point at which I talk about three rather than four is what yeah, this, the third paragraph under that section starts the five year plan for three major building projects, library, DPW and elementary school and DPW period. It's like it's almost a half a sentence, um, so, yeah. you know, fix the sentence, but then say the, you know, four major building projects, you could even something that says and fire which and, the, and some description that fire does not show up on this plan because the current plan is to pay for it out of capital stabilization 100% without borrowing or the current plan is to pay for that without borrowing or something like that. Yeah, I could I could help with that Alex just on uh, fixing that because I I realized when I wrote it it's 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 only not on that one page. It's not that it went off the list. Yeah. It would show up on the five year plan if the 20 million plan to pay for it was within the next five years, but I think it's on like year seven, six or seven, Sean, seven or eight. Yeah, so it's um, it would be in that FY 27, FY 28 if we were to add roughly $2 million per year um, over the next few years. Yeah. You know, so the, I think. We will make that work wording accurate. And Irv's only comment, which he sent to all of us, is that if anything, the sentence that says we face difficult choices, um, I think he wanted to put it in large caps with yellow shading or something. He said it, it was basically you can't understate <laughs> that the uh, what what this picture looks like when you're looking at it over a, a period of time. Um, you know, since we're actually being, I think everyone knows we're being pretty optimistic that we can build for the amount of money we've said for DPW and fire. I mean, especially when we're talking about fire five years from now. Um, so who knows? Maybe construction takes a plummet and there's people are eager to build, eager to build again. Um, now, we actually heard with the school, I mean, it's not, it gives you a sense of the crunch. One school that's already out, they got the bids, ready to go, and the electrical company that was going to do all the wiring and all the work went bankrupt because they realized they could not honor what they had bid. They could not do the work for that amount of money. <laughs> and so now it's, and it was a major, you know, it was a major regional uh, contractor, and it was a combination of the cost of each of the pe the wires and everything else had gone up, and the sh a shortage of labor, a shortage of labor, and delays in the pipeline. But they literally said, "We, uh, we, we can't do it. You know, we can't do it for what we bid on." And you know, the bid was like six months early. You know, it wasn't like we bid on it two years ago or four years ago. So. It was a cautionary tale on what uh, people are are facing who are building right this year. I mean, that was what this building was. Alex. Um, yeah, so I just, in terms of um, 
edits that I made or comments that I had. Um, yeah, I think Mandy Joe was done, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, on section B, where it says the five-year plan and other material in the capital improvement plan, the last paragraph says, we repeat our suggestion from last year that the town manager consider ways to profile major capital expenditures in the enterprise funds and the Community Preservation Act in public presentations of the capital plan for a more comprehensive summary of capital improvements across all funding sources. I just don't think that's actually a discussion we had this year. So if the group is okay with us restating that, that's fine. I just don't think we actually talked about it. Yeah, um, we did. We did. That came up last year. Um, as uh, I'm just checking, is that something you're right. ignore? Is that? And and you're right. All I did was keep the wording from last year. So, uh, people, you know, and and that just just so people know, what I took a look when Northampton comes out, the mayor comes out with her CIP. It has all the big buckets, you know, so even if it's just uh, this is the town and general fund and here's the enterprise funds that it's uh, we are, in fact, spending a lot in those funds on capital and they have reserves. So it was a recommendation that we not completely silo them, but um, talk about them in some way. And we as you can hear from that vague wording, we weren't saying how to do this. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I see both Pam and Mandy. So you, Alex is asking whether we're comfortable keeping that wording since we didn't have a discussion. Pam? I wasn't planning to comment on that. Okay. Um, does anyone, let me put it this way, does anyone object to keeping that wording? So I don't object, but I wonder if we could add the region of capital spending in. I know it's in the capital plan, but it's buried sort of in the borrowing payment line, right? Um, so you would just ask, and you would put the regional budget to, you know, somewhere. Some, some sort of line that describes the regional spending budget too, because it, it's in the five-year plan because it's part of our borrowing payments, but no one ever sees anything about it really, at least on our capital plan. Okay. Yeah, we could add as, as an appendix or something, the region's capital plan. Um, you know, the Northampton plan, Kathy, it's like 400 pages, but um, no, I know I was, I was they, thinking, they append what, what a lot. Um, but... No, no, it's a, it, it's not a bad suggestion. Um, so yeah, we could append that in the future so people can see. Um, and I was thinking, and, even so, if it was a hot link to another document that said there is a document that you can see, so I wasn't trying to make it unwieldy. Okay. <laughs> Pam, do you, do you want me to finish my comments, Pam, or did you want to? Why don't, why don't you? I have a very different topic. Oh, okay. Um, the other thing I did was um, on the FY24 capital request proposed to JCPC, um, uh, where, Kathy, you started to put what the what we changed, or what the um, town manager proposed and how we got to. I actually listed each one, the original amount, the savings so that everybody, and I also made it more clear because I didn't want it to seem like everything got pushed because some of them are already being paid for. So I just made it a little more clear that some of them are actually being removed. Like we're not pushing every, what's being pushed out versus what's not and where the savings was. Um, I also, after that section, added a little bit of a line, just more as a explanation about chapter 90, funds and the fact that they've basically been level funded since fiscal year 12. So today's dollars are roughly, you know, have roughly dropped by 43%. So what we can buy with state funds is significantly less. So it's not just that we don't care about roads in our town. It's that what the state provides is, is, is super lacking and we're trying our best to make up for that loss. So I just added a little bit of background I think that's great. And, you know, if people want to see that you could, I think you can share your screen. I don't know what, whether we've got sharing enabled, but I, I think that's great. Those are excellent changes. You get to see all my red. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I just added, you know, roadside, they continue to be a priority. Um, I don't know how big that is. Yep. That's great. Right. And then the, how we sort of talked about, you know, the 800, so basically chapter 90 money gets us three quarters of a mile. Um, and I also clarified, Kathy, where you had talked about significant cuts in fiscal year 25 and 26 to be more specific that we're actually cutting the town's portion in half. So the overall spending isn't like, just so it was clear that 
Yep. If the town's putting a million, we're only putting a half a million, but you still get the chapter 80 or chapter 90 funds. So I just clarified that a little bit. Yep. Um, and I also clarify that as part of our deliberation, at least for me, that any unused funds, you know, we're bumping this up to over 2 million and anything that's unused would go into the next year. Okay. And then I just took out some of the editorial, as you know, I often do. Um, let's see. I think those were the only, these are Sean's changes. Oh, I also um, added, we broke out everybody and then we left the library out. So I put the library back in that we were only spending 29,000 on IT. So I probably have to go back and reduce that IT budget by, well, I don't even, cause it's not even noticeable in the number. But again, if we're pointing out every different department and what we spend, I just wanted to point out what we spent on the library to be consistent. Um, I think it's this. Mer, 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 mer. Um, oh, I think I just added the language uh, that Sean had said about the assumptions being used around. Yep. Uh, yeah. So, um, oh, and I changed this because it's not securing funding, it's you guys voting. Um, Oh, sorry. And this is me making notes now about what Mandy Jo just said. So yep. <laughs> that's it. How do I unshare? Uh, there's oh, there some way to get the share. <laughs> okay. Pam. So one quick, uh, actually one comment on, on Alex's text. In that paragraph that you showed, you know, the, the numbers in parentheses for each of the items is kind of a long list of a paragraph. Could we bullet them or something? My mind doesn't track numbers. Like I did <laughs> I'm the same way I like bullets um so let's see I did or is it dunk 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 you had mostly bullets except this one paragraph okay. so this is where right here is where we said uh this is right. what the town rooms are proposed yeah and so. then she was and then she was talking about the one you just showed out where it just said so much yeah. from the library so much for each of those got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. yep done Thank you, thank you. So my my comment is totally different. Again, maybe my last it's the last comment I can make as a newbie. Um, we have inter we have the enterprise funds, but we never get to review their capital needs. We never get to look at their their vehicles. I have no idea if they're charging. You know, if my water rate is reasonable, or if there are expenditures that are things that I wouldn't want to see them spending money on. At what point, remind me, please, where anybody gets to review their budget? So, <laughs> yeah, so the so the town council is technically the water and sewer commission as well. Um, and you will vote on rates and you'll see all the debt um, and operating um, as part of the, the annual budget. There is a, and Pam, I'll send you the schedule. Finance committee has a specific slot. Okay. Where we where we do that, including they have um, stabilization funds in them, you know, so that we don't have to do all the capital out of debt, um, and we're drawing on and or we stabilization fund helps us pay the debt service on the cap, but yes, um, so it has both the operating costs, the the capital costs, the expected new, and what that does to the rates. So that is a specific day that we see those in all their glory. Yeah, it'll actually start next month. Um, I think we'll start discussing water and sewer with finance committee a little bit more, and then you'll see it as part of the budget. Yeah, because it occurred to me, I mean, that's as much money out of our pockets as our tax dollar is. So it would be really important to review those. Was there any reason that they didn't come to JCPC to begin with? It's always been general fund, right? Yeah, I look to you, Alex. Do, do in your time as enterprise ever come to JCPC? No. No. Okay. Um, I think because it's just um, enterprise funds are really standalone, separate um, little uh, financial units for the town that they've never been included. I guess I would also say it's part of when we set the rates yeah. for water and sewer, what goes into those rates are some of those, those capital costs. So at that point you could have, could, you know, and then when you look at the budget and pass the enterprise fund budgets, you could at that point say no or reduce it there. Or when, when we do borrowing for them, 
we do approve them separately. Remember Centennial and, and things like that. Those come separately, but we always, you know, they're, they're sort of intertwined with rates and all more than the capital out of our, these revenues are. Thank you. So are we, is everyone comfortable with, um, we've, we've done actually some substantive edits on the report and what we can do after this meeting. I mean, we got consensus around some of the wording. Alex can clean up her edits and send us a clean document for everyone to, to react to. And if you're willing and you send your comments just to me, we'll work toward getting a final version um, without having to come back and go through line edits. And if there's any, and then you would get to see that too. So it wouldn't be that that just goes off without people seeing. And so if people can get, um, especially those of you who are particularly good at seeing the oddities, you know, when I type fast, Alex caught most of them or caught others, but I start one sentence and I forget to delete the pre-existing sentence and just keep writing so I can get it done. And so there were are uh, things that literally don't make sense if you read them too carefully. Um, but is, does that work for everyone that we've got a report? Because then we can get to a final draft and get it out. And what I've been doing as chair to report to the council, I do like a one pager that says, here's the report we submitted to the manager. Key things to know about it are the following. And I, I don't do a, a, a recapture of every discussion we've had. Um, so I'm seeing yes. So it's in Alex's very capable hands. And then we will we will get a clean. And Alex, I think that means you just do a clean draft. And then Sean, you will do get us the set of tables that because you get us a new set of tables, but now there's another set of tables with yeah. the, the tree and ground one changes and body cams disappears yep. and whatever you call this this other line reappears. Yeah, yeah, we'll update um, we'll update all that um, okay. so you can add it to the report. Okay. Are you looking for a vote today sort of in anticipation? Oh, so I'm so so, that, so, so if I if if someone wants to make a motion that would be great, Mandy, because then we will officially be doing that. That would be great. So I, I just don't know what the motion looks like when the changes are still being made. That's why I'm, I, I don't know. So you we could say a, a motion to accept the report uh, as amended, um, subject to a final review of edit edits. Um, okay, I think I'm getting something. So it's a motion to uh, accept the report as, in consistent with the conversation on March 23rd, 2023, um, and, and allow or give permission or permit the chair to forward, to make final edits and forward um, to submit to Paul, town manager. Okay, and um, we didn't assign a minute taker, but since you very clearly worded that, we'll make sure it's in the minutes that we, that's what we're voting on, because <laughs> um, I'll just go back and do it, and and uh, yes, so we'll figure out how to make sure the minutes, is, is everyone okay with the wording of that motion? I second it. And we'll take a vote. Uh, Pam? Yes. Farah. Yes. Mandy. Aye. Alex. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. And Kathy is a yes. That's an unanimous. So we have a 15 minutes left. If people are comfortable at this point, um, we have some members of the public. If we open it up for public comments. Yes. Okay, we are open to public comments. Raise your hand if you would like to join us and provide a comment. 
Sean, you're the, I think you're the host. I can't, we have yeah, one. Bring it in, um, Tony. Yep. Hi, Tony. Welcome. Hi, thank you. I just wanted to um, support the stance of not purchasing a diesel bus. I think that would be going backward in this day and age. And I think that a lot of creative solutions were suggested today. So whichever one makes most sense, whether that's contracting with Five Star for another bus or, you know, speeding up a proposal, getting a proposal from Highland Fleets. I, I would love to see the town move toward a contract with Highland Fleets um, if that's a viable option. Um, but definitely, please do not purchase a d diesel bus <laughs> at this point. It just seems insane. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Um, any one else? We have one other person. I'm not seeing a hand up. So I think unless people have a final observation, I, I want to thank everyone. I mean, this has been terrific collaboration um, with and participation on a lot of much more difficult interactive decisions, I think, than last year. You know, because of the pro because of some of the projects that we were were focused on. And uh, next year and the year after, I just have to say it's going to be a whole nother discussion because it was awfully easy to get to zero a balanced budget this year. Um, so uh, we'll we'll see where we are a year from now. And and Sean, a big thanks to you. I mean, what what you have what you have done to both get answers to our questions and then come up with um, a reaction, a thoughtful reaction on a, we agreed with what you were saying and we're moving this or we're deleting it or we're change, altering it. Uh, it wouldn't have been possible to get to this point without you. So really, thank. Thanks. I mean, I think this. Um, committee, the point is for us to hear your feedback and to adjust the plan, you know, take your input and then reconsider some of the things that were in the preliminary plan. And I know the last few years that's worked really well. You guys have given really good input um, that has resulted in a stronger plan. And I think to your point about future years being more difficult, um, you're probably right. And the good news is when it does get more difficult, it will hopefully mean that we have started a project, <laughs> which which is ultimately our goal is to start <laughs> one of the projects. Um, I know it seems like just like breaking ground is uh, eluding us, um, but when it does get more difficult, it'll force some tough decisions, but again, it'll mean we've moved forward on something. Um, so that'll be an, uh, a fun process to go through with everybody. That, 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 that is a really good way of looking at this as it's, 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 it's a positive evolution that we, we are actually on our way to uh, getting one of these done. Um, so I want to I, thank you, everyone, and um, Alex will do her magic. And Alex, whenever you're ready, I'll I'll do a quick look just to match it against my uh, notes, and then we'll get it out to everyone. And again, just do edits just back to me, and then to the extent, um, you know, I'll either incorporate them right away, or if it's some judgment calls that people were editing different things, I'll work with Alex. I mean, we're 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 a good team on this. So thank you, and enjoy the rest of your Thursday. We are adjourned at two fifty. Thank you. Well, thank thanks you. Thanks to both Kathy and Alex for doing that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye.